Hello students, today we will discuss decomposition reactions. But before we discuss decomposition reactions, let us discuss the symbols which are used in chemical reactions. Forward arrow for a forward reaction, backward arrow for a backward reaction, reversibility sign for a reversible reaction, upward arrow for a gas being released, downward arrow for an insoluble solid or a precipitate being formed, delta sign for heat, small s for solid, small g for gas, small l for liquid, aq for aqueous that means a solution in water, ppt for a precipitate being formed, conc for a concentrated solution, a solution having less quantity of water, dil for dilute that means having more concentration of water. Let us now discuss colorless and odorless gases. Oxygen O2, hydrogen H2, nitrogen N2, carbon monoxide CO, carbon dioxide CO2, methane CH4 and water vapors H2O. Now all these gases are colorless as well as odorless. But out of these gases, carbon monoxide is one gas which is highly poisonous and causes a situation which is known as asphyxiation. Now carbon monoxide Asphyxiation means suffocation. So now this gas is generally released when hydrocarbons undergo incomplete combustion. If you burn petrol or diesel in an insufficient supply that means in a less quantity of oxygen it forms carbon monoxide. If you burn coal in an insufficient supply of oxygen it forms carbon monoxide. So if you are burning a coal fire and you are sitting inside a room and all doors and windows are closed. So, this particular gas will be released because the supply of oxygen is less. Since the supply of oxygen is less, it is going to be, uh, it is going to release carbon monoxide and you will not come to know about this gas because it is colorless as well as odorless. So, you will not be able to detect its presence. So, ultimately, it is going to cause this situation known as asphyxiation which is known as suffocation. Now, what happens exactly when carbon mono, when we are exposed to carbon monoxide? Carbon monoxide combines with the hemoglobin present in our blood and forms carboxyhemoglobin. Carboxy, C A R B O X Y, carboxyhemoglobin. H A E M O G L O B I N. Okay, so carboxyhemoglobin is formed which cuts off the supply of oxygen in our blood and ultimately leads to suffocation and death. Now, let us discuss colored gases with odor. Chlorine is Cl2, it's a greenish yellow gas having a pungent irritating odor. Nitrogen dioxide is NO2 having a reddish brown color, it is again a pungent irritating gas. Bromine is another gas which is reddish brown color has a pungent irritating odor. Now let us discuss colored, colorless gases with odor. Hydrogen sulfide H2S is a rotten egg like smelling gas. It is a kind of a, a kind of smell that we get near swampy areas. It's also known as a sewer gas. It is produced from the dead decaying organic matter that means vegetable matter or any dead decaying human body, animal body produces hydrogen sulfide gas. Ammonia NH3 it is another pungent smelling gas. It is produced near urinals because our urine contains uric acid which is a compound of ammonia. So urinals the smell near urina urinals is that of ammonia. Sulfur dioxide SO2, it is another pungent smelling gas and it is the kind of smell that we get when you strike a matchstick. So when you strike a matchstick, the smell is that of sulfur dioxide SO2. And this particular gas is produced when combustion of sulfur containing fuels like coal and oil takes place. Hydrogen chloride HCl is another colorless gas having a pungent choking odor. Hydrogen chloride is very commonly found in our body, in the gastric juices, in our stomach and it is also released during volcanic emissions. Nitrogen dioxide, it is produced during the combustion of fuels like coal, petrol and diesel. Now let us discuss what is meant by a decomposition reaction. Now it is a reaction in which Breaking up of a compound takes place either into elements or simpler compounds such that these products do not recombine to form the original compound. So that means this point is very important. The compounds are not the elements or the uh, compounds being formed do not recombine. They cannot recombine to form the original product. Then we call it as a decomposition reaction. And just remember decomposition reactions are always reverse of combination reactions. 
In the combination reaction, elements or compounds are combined together and they form a single product. Only one product is being formed in a decomposition reaction. However, uh, sorry, in a combination reaction. In a combination reaction, elements or compounds are combining together to form a single product. In a decomposition reaction, one product is breaking up, splitting up into simpler substances. Now, it can be brought about by heat, light or electric current. If it is brought about by heat, it is known as thermal decomposition. Brought about by light, it is known as photolytic decomposition. If it is brought about by electric current, it is known as electrolytic decomposition. Now, the general form of this equation is AB, any compound in the presence of heat, light or electric current forms A and B, where A and B could be elements, they could also be compounds. So, let us uh, see in which forms can decomposition reactions exist. In a decomposition reaction, a compound breaks up to form two or more elements. As you can see in these two examples, mercury oxide HgO on being heated forms mercury and oxygen. So, one compound is breaking up into two simpler substances, two elements. It is a decomposition reaction. Since one compound is breaking up to form two simple substances, it is a decomposition reaction. Water, please remember pure water is not a good conductor of electricity and will not split up into hydrogen and oxygen. Only if we take acidulated water and we pass electric current through it, it breaks up into hydrogen and oxygen. So, this is a decomposition reaction. Next form is a compound can break up to form both elements and compounds. So, as in case of potassium nitrate, KNO3, it is a very, very important salt which is used in fireworks, rocket propellants, in fertilizers and is a major constituent of gunpowder which is an explosive. So, potassium nitrate KNO3 on being heated forms potassium nitrite KNO2. So, please remember NO3 is one radical, NO2 is another radical. So, there are two different formulas plus oxygen O2. Next is a compound can also break up to form two or more new compounds. There could be new compounds also being formed. Calcium carbonate is a um, is a white colored solid. It is found in marble and in chalk. When we heat it, it forms quicklime, calcium oxide, CaO, plus carbon dioxide, a colorless and odorless gas. Now, let us discuss finally a few more decomposition reactions. Silver nitrate, it is a, uh, it is a salt and it is a reagent also. On uh, In the presence of light, it decomposes to form silver, nitrogen, dioxide and oxygen. Hydrogen peroxide in the presence of light decomposes to form water and oxygen. Now, please remember these two are very, very important reagents. They are always placed in amber colored bottles. In labs, they always place in amber colored bottles and the reason is that these undergo photolytic decomposition. So, they always place in amber colored bottles which is the kind of color of your tables and chairs in school. So, as to prevent their contact with light. It could be with ordinary light also and of, of course with sunlight also. Now, the next equation is again very, very important and is a very, very important observation type questions being asked. So, lead nitrate, it is a white colored solid. On being heated, it forms lead monoxide PBO, which is a yellow colored solid and reddish brown fumes of nitrogen dioxide and a colorless odorless gas oxygen is being evolved. So, that means what happens when lead nitrate is heated? A white colored solid lead nitrate changes to a yellow colored solid PBO with the evolution of reddish brown fumes of nitrogen dioxide and a colorless odorless gas oxygen. Finally, a last equation potassium chlorate on being heated forms potassium chloride and oxygen. So, I hope children you have understood today's topic on decomposition reactions. In our next class, we will discuss displacement reactions. Thank you.